Hello there, and welcome to Project Business Basics, designed to give you the tools to make smarter financial decisions. Whether you're looking to learn something brand new, or just want a refresher on some basic economics, there is a place for everyone on our show. I'm Archie Janarker, and I'm your host. Today we're going to be talking about a concept that we've briefly mentioned before, and that concept consists of what are known as the Greeks. We had alluded to the Greeks before, but today we'll go a little bit more into detail about some of them. So first of all, what even are the Greeks? So the Greeks are related to options, and what most of them will tell you is the rate of change of an option's price. If you'll recall, with an option, we had a stock, an expiry date, a strike price, and whether the option was a call or a put, and then the price that the option was trading at. And a lot of people who trade or buy or sell options, to them, the price that the option can be bought or sold at is very important. So these Greeks then are what tell you as the trader or the person involved in the transaction how much an option price is going to move. So let's get started. So there are five different Greeks we're going to talk about, and they're all called Greeks because of their names. So the first one we're going to discuss is Delta. In the Greek language, Delta is symbolized by a triangle. So with Delta, Delta tells you that for every $1 increase in a stock's price, the Delta value then will tell you how much the price of an option will change. So let's say, for example, that we had a Delta of 50 cents, and we were using the stock T-Mobile as an example. So right now, T-Mobile stock is about $123. And let's just say that a call option with a strike price of 130 is currently priced at 76 cents per contract. So we're told then that delta is 50 cents. So then let's say that T-Mobile stock price sometime in the future, and keeping all other factors constant, so ceteris paribus, that sometime in the future, T-Mobile stock price is $124. So it moved up by exactly $1. So that means that the 130 strike price call option is now worth 50 cents more. And we know that because of the delta value. So 76 cents plus 50 cents means that the 130 strike price call option is now worth $1.26. So delta then tells us how an options price moves based on changes in the stock price. Now though, let's look at theta. So if you remember with options, options also have a time decay in them that the closer you get to expiry, the either more or less valuable the option becomes depending on where the stock price is relative to the strike price of the option. So theta is symbolized with an O or a circle with a horizontal line running right through the middle. So let's say that T-Mobile stock price is $123. And the same situation, the 130 strike price call option is currently worth 76 cents. Now for our example's sake, let's say theta is negative 25 cents. So what does that mean? Well remember, right now T-Mobile stock price is $123. So one day later, exactly one day later, we'll keep all other factors constant. So T-Mobile stock price is still $123. The stock price didn't change, so delta isn't involved. So the only factor that has changed here is time, the time to expiry. And because we're now one day farther into the future, theta tells us that the price of the 130 call option is going to go down by 25 cents. So 76 cents minus 25 cents means that the 130 strike price call option one day later is now worth 51 cents. Okay, now let's look at Rho. So Rho explains to us the relationship between interest rates and then the price of the option. So let's say right now, the current national interest rate set by the Federal Reserve is right around 5%. And right now, in reality, it's nowhere close to that. But just for our example's purpose, we'll say that right now, the interest rates are 5%. And we're going to use the same situation with T-Mobile's 130 strike price call option that's worth right now 76 cents. So Rho then tells us 
that for every 1% increase in interest rates, then that's how much the options value increases. So for our example, rho is 20 cents. So if interest rates go from 5% to 5.05%, which is a 1% increase, and this is sometime in the future, then rho means that this 130 strike price call option is going to be worth 20 cents more. So 76 cents plus 20 cents means that the call option is now worth 96 cents. And that of course assumes that all other factors, so time decay and then delta, so that's the stock price that we talked about earlier, stay constant or are balanced out by each other. Okay, now let's look at what is now called Vega. So Vega tells us that whenever there is a 1% increase in what is known as implied volatility, then the value of Vega is how much the options price increases or decreases. So implied volatility is measured by what is called the volatility index, or VIX. And VIX generally is a measure that tells an investor or trader what the market's general level of volatility is. So let's say then, in our example, that right now, the VIX index is currently at 30. And same situation with the 130 call option. So that right now is worth 76 cents in our scenario. And Vega, which is symbolized by a lowercase v in the English language, Vega is 10 cents right now. So that means if the volatility index increases by 1% from 30, sometime in the future, and all other factors are kept constant, so that 1% increase then is from 30 to 30.3, that means then that the value of the 130 call option is going to increase by 10 cents. So 76 cents plus 10 cents is 86 cents. Okay, now let's look at gamma. Gamma is symbolized by an L flipped on a horizontal axis. So basically it's an upside down L. So gamma is different from all the other four Greeks we talked about. Gamma tells us the rate of change of delta, and that is what makes it so different from the other four. The other four told us how some factor affected the price of an option. But gamma is telling us how change in stock price causes delta to change. So if you have experience with calculus and you think in those terms, imagine that you have a function f of x. Then f of x, in our scenario, resembles the options value, and gamma then symbolizes f double prime x. So it's like you're finding the rate of change twice. You're finding the rate of change of the rate of change. So if we go back and remember delta, Delta is telling us for every $1 increase in stock price, then the options value increases by whatever delta's value is. So let's look at then how delta's value changes. So right now, if T-Mobile stock price is $123, and we have a delta value of 50 cents, and our gamma value, let's say, is 2 cents, then what that means is if T-Mobile stock price increases to $124 from $123, so that $1 increase, then delta will increase by gamma's current value. So gamma right now is 2 cents, delta is 50 cents, so in the future, that means that whenever T-Mobile stock price went from 123 to 124, and all other factors remained constant, then delta suddenly moved to 52 cents from 50 cents. Okay, let's recap. We talked about five different Greeks today. We talked first about delta, which based on that value, for every $1 a stock's price increases, then the options value increases by that amount. Then we talked about theta. Theta, remember T for time. So for every one day that passes, then the options value changes by whatever theta's value is. Then we talked about rho. Rho told us the relationship between interest rates and the options price. 
So for every 1% increase in the interest rates set by the Federal Reserve, then the options value increases or decreases by whatever rose value is. And then we talked about Vega. Vega said for every 1% increase in implied volatility, and remember, implied volatility is measured by the volatility index, so VIX. For every 1% increase in the volatility index, then the options value changes by whatever Vega's value is. And then finally, our Greek that was dramatically different from the rest was gamma. Gamma served as a second order derivative that told us the rate of change of delta. So for every $1 increase in the stock price, then delta changed by whatever gamma's value was. So these are just the main Greeks so far. They're not all of them, but they are some of the factors that are looked at and used when trading options. I hope you enjoyed that episode and learned something from it. If you're looking for recommendations for good investing in business books, I encourage you to check out the Project Business Basics blog and also sign up for the Project Business Basics newsletter. You can do all this through the Project Business Basics website, which is www.businessbasics.online. Also, make sure to check out our social media. We're on Instagram and Twitter with the username at P-R-O-J B-I-Z Basics. I'm Archie Janarker. This is Project Business Basics. Thanks for listening.